Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this week's video, I wanted to show you guys how to organize your thread boxes. So if you just like got a bunch of new strings and you want to know how to like organize them properly or like the easiest way that I do it and some ideas, then this will be a good video for you. So before you get started, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Alright, so the first step is, the way that I do it is I divide all of my strings into color categories. And so I'll simply just start by like putting all of the reds in one pile, the pinks in another pile, oranges, corals, so far. So usually I try and go as precise as I can with the colors. So I'm not just going to make one orange and then put like every single orangey yellow. I'm going to make like separate categories. Of course, that's not mandatory. You can just make it one category and simply just put them together. But for me, I find it a lot easier if you do make like specific categories. And so I just move everything off to the side and I sort of gather all of my colors. Like if it says blue, then I'll put all my blues in one pile. Darker blues will go in a different pile and so on. And then like blue purples and everything. And so the only tip I have for this step would be to very evidently divide your colors. So make a different pile for teals and blues. Like don't put them in the same pile because this is going to help you a lot when you're further like distributing your colors in order to make a nice gradient. So I didn't mention that at the beginning, but obviously... I'm going to try and make like a gradient with my color strings. I'm not just going to randomly put them in. I just find that it's a lot easier on the eyes if it's in order. And so I try my best to make it look as nice as I can. So obviously that's not mandatory. You can just put them in. And I do recommend putting them on bobbins. I know some people just keep them like in the skins how it comes. But um, it gets, t I don't know if that's just me, how I open the strings, but it always would get tangled. And so... Putting them on bobbins is a super easy solution to that, and they're pretty cheap. You can buy them off of Amazon, like $250 for like $15. And so it's definitely something that will make your bracelet sort of prior to start knotting. It'll make it a lot easier for you. And so as you can see, I've started dividing my colors. I'm trying to fit them as best as I can in the frame, but there's a lot of colors here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish sorting out the categories and then I'll be back for step three. Right, so I divided into categories and so the next step is going to be to simply choose the rainbow that you want. So you can choose if you want to start from red and go all the way to pink or if you want to start from pink and go to like purples and browns. And so this is pretty much the most important part because everyone can sort of have different rainbow variations and so I'm going to do it from... I haven't even decided yet. I'm trying to think. I, I'm i going to do it from pink. Then I'm going to go from pinks to reds. Then from red to orange. From orange to yellow. And you simply, on your table, you want to just put out, put all of your piles in order. Then from yellow to green. From green to the light blues. Let me grab those. From green to light blues. Then I'm going to go over here from light blues, from light blues to dark blues, from dark blues to dark purples, from dark purple to light purple. And then from light purple, I have these sort of like miscellaneous colors that I'll just put in at the end. And I just realized I completely forgot about coral. Um, we can put coral right at the beginning prior to pink. So once you have this order, now is when you sort of review it and sort of in your in your sort of like eyes, sort of pick, do you think that this looks good or not? And so from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and start putting out my bobbins in a straight line. And then I'm gonna try my, I'm gonna start moving them around to see how they sort of match. All right, so I have a pretty rough draft of how I want the colors. And so, like I said, I literally, with all my categories, I just sort of put one category per row and then I looked at the colors and I arranged them in a way that I thought looked pretty. And so the camera doesn't really capture everything, but it goes from there all the way to there. And so now the next step is to just go through all of them and 
just make some minor changes if you think that like certain colors should go in different places. And so this is pretty much the final step to the process. And so once you do this, you can move on to the next step, which I will show you guys in just a second. So the next step is to grab your storage container. And so I just have these ones from Michaels. You can get them from pretty much any craft store or even Amazon. And I put the dividers in. And so from here, you simply just start with your first row. And I put them in vertically, but you can also put them in horizontally. And you just put them in one by one from your ordered, from your ordered like pair on your table. And you just stuff each square as much as you can, depending because some of my strings are not used. Well, some of them are, so obviously some of them are thinner than others. And so you just, there's not really a specific number. You just put as many as you can in without making it look kind of stuffed. And so this is pretty simple. You just sort of hold it up to ensure that they don't fall. And the one thing that I do recommend is if you get a strand like this, just take it out and wrap it around because it'll make your entire box look very disorganized and it will be extremely annoying. So you just grab your colors and this can get kind of hard, especially when the bobbins are thin, but you just push them and put them in. Don't just push them in vertically because then you have the chance of catching, like when you're pushing it like this, you have the chance of catching some strings. So make sure to push this one back and then slip it in. And so this process can take a while depending on how fast you work, but just make sure to always remember to push it back and then push in the new string. And then you put each, there's not a specific number, just keep putting things in until they don't really fit anymore. So that I'll just go ahead and continue until I reach the end of my box. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like as a final product. And so this is the final product. I just simply put all of these strings in. And as you see, I had two extras. Um, so these I'll, I might move into a different box or I will just leave it here. It definitely looks really organized. I really love it. I think it looks super nice and pretty. And here I had a divider and I always buy boxes with removable dividers because like this case, I don't need it. And so I can store any tool, for instance, my bobbin winder, and I can also store like keychain hooks or mini scissors or anything like that. And so that's what this small little compartment will be used for. And I can also put some like scrap, scrap strings on here, anything like that. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that these sort of like step-by-step -step instructions were helpful for you. I definitely think that having like an organized um, string box is easy. Obviously, it doesn't stay like this for very long, if I'm being honest. Like mine will probably get messed up in a matter of like five or ten uses. But I think that no matter what, it looks really nice now. It's also quite fun to do. I really like organizing everything. And so if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Bye.